knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have, uh, the more you can say, do I know on any given day what the Russians would do as far as indications of hostility? There was an absolute certainty. All the Russians were 10 feet tall. They were all evil. They ate little children. Uh, they were just about the killers of the Western world. In the early 1950s, as Cold War paranoia swept through America, the CIA formed a special technical division to steal secrets directly from the mouths of the communists. Working with cumbersome technology, which was hard and exhausting to hide, it was their job to plant listening devices in Soviet bloc installations the world over. Glenn Whitten was one of the first to become an eavesdropper for the CIA. The people who were actually on the road doing the job probably numbered two dozen, and they were busy a lot of the time. We were required to travel pretty much throughout the world to install eavesdropping devices. And once in the target, uh, it was a tough job because we had things like that big doorknob microphone that had to be concealed. And that type of thing requires a pretty good sized hole. It will only send a signal over a wire line for a limited distance. The thick 1950s cable needed to be painstakingly hidden in walls or under floors and run out of the building to a listening post where the conversations could be recorded. Embassies were often the target, and so an ideal situation was to discover when the Soviets were planning to move to a new building. The agency's job was to find when those moves were going to take place and then to give us enough chance to get there before occupancy to make the installation. I much preferred to work alone because if I heard a strange sound, I know it wasn't me and it wasn't anybody with me. I used to have frequently made surreptitious entries. I do it in a business suit because if you were observed uh, in the vicinity of the target, you might not arouse as much suspicion as you would if you had all black with a ski mask. I have left targets soaking wet from perspiration and literally having lost perhaps 10 pounds of weight. Often it was impossible for intelligence agencies to gain access to the buildings or rooms they wanted to bug. So special tools were developed to allow them to plant bugs through the walls of an adjacent building. Forty years ago, Lee Tracy installed bugs for Britain's Foreign Intelligence Service. What I'm holding here is an old probe mic of the 1950-1960s. And this has a sharp point on the end, and this was used to try and get through the final bit of plaster if you didn't happen to have the right gear and you'd try and force it through. But what you really needed was a silent drill, because you would not use this part anymore. What you would then use is just this. And the technique behind it is to drill a hole big enough to take this and get this right through the wall up to the plaster on the other side, It's no good misjudging it and just going crashing through. Just make a mistake and hit that plaster too hard and you're finished. Silent drills are classified as secret in Britain. This modern kit obtained in France contains everything the eavesdropper needs to quietly cut holes in walls. You've got a, a drill here which is um, silently operating inside this case and it stays in the case while it operates. The flexible control comes out into a unit here which takes uh, water in and sucks all the muck out and keeps the, the drill silent. It might take you, say, only 10, 15, 20 minutes to get through the main brick and it might take you another three hours just to get that final little bit till you hit the plaster. Right, now that we have the large hole which will take the microphone capsule and the electronics, we need a tiny one millimetre hole through the plaster on the other side and we use this tiny, very, very thin, careful drill to do that. And I gently work it until it goes through the plaster and all I want on the other side is 
just a one millimeter hole and there it goes and that's done and I now push that in there till I reach out of the side and there we go In the 1940s, the problem facing intelligence agencies was how to bug rooms they couldn't get anywhere near, like an ambassador's office. But in 1948, the Russians solved the problem and created a revolutionary bug which they concealed in a carving of the Great Seal of America. They presented the American side with this eagle, and, uh, which was put on the wall of the um, uh, office of the American ambassador. What the American ambassador didn't realize was that hidden behind the eagle's beak was a transmitting bug which had no batteries, no microphone and needed no wires. Called a passive cavity resonator, it was activated remotely by a powerful radio beam which it reflected back out of the building, carrying with it the ambassador's conversations. The device, as I understand it, was in place for three or four years before it was discovered. It also caused enough of a flurry over here so that we spent, I would say, literally millions of dollars to try to develop detection equipment that could be used to detect that sort of thing if it appeared or was in use elsewhere. It turned out that, in our experience at least, it wasn't used anywhere else. But the Americans weren't the only target of the KGB. It was possible for us to install one of such devices in the, in the British, one of the offices of the British Embassy. Today, retired KGB technicians are only too pleased to show off later versions of their astonishing passive cavity resonator. The British and Americans copied the device, but by the 1960s, the growing number of television sets helped highlight the bug's fundamental weakness. The radio beam it requires is so powerful, it can sometimes interfere with other broadcast signals, making the bug susceptible to detection. Avoiding detection is the hardest lesson to learn for the eavesdropper. What I teach is to use what microphones already exist in the room. By far the most dangerous microphone in any room is the ordinary loudspeaker. Uh, they can be found in TV sets, radios, telephone earpieces, telephone mouthpieces, all of which can transmit a signal through a pair of wires to a listening post. I'm going to take this ordinary loudspeaker and simply hook a pair of wires to it it's plugged into a tape recorder, and I'm going to record a brief segment using this as the microphone itself. It doesn't matter what the physical size is, they all work the same way. Sound goes in, electricity comes out. I'll stop it, rewind, and play it. It doesn't matter what the physical size is, they all work the same way. Sound goes in, electricity comes out. Once an eavesdropper has adapted an existing speaker into a microphone, to avoid detection further, they will try to use the building's existing cables to get the signals out. Bugging a telephone line has always been a favorite of the eavesdropper. Known as the wiretap, if it's done properly, it is virtually impossible to detect. <laughs> 